This is one that we ran a year, or well, I was told it was even more than a year ago that we ran it. So hopefully we have some new folks in here that are interested in doing an installation. And this is my experience, some of the things that I gleaned from it, some of the uh, ideas I want to pass on to you, some of the goals I had. And we'll take a look at the finished product. You can see it out on the street. It works very nicely, but it was a very exciting project. And I have to thank my neighbor, Brian, who lives across the street, not Brian in here, because he was very encouraging. Uh, I was ready to, when I'm stringing these wires, I was ready to call it good enough. <laughs> and he came over and looked at it, and he said, nah, I don't think that's good enough yet. So I went back, and I made it good enough, and now, come right in, have a seat. And I said, I went back and I looked at it again, and I said, nah, you know, you're right. Let's just do it a little differently. And now I feel very satisfied that it is good enough. So the uh, these were the this is the project goals. The project goals were to have a two meter and seventy centimeter installation when I was finished, so you can pick up the mic and talk. Operate from either the passenger side or from the driver's side in operation. Important, park the car in the garage. Now that means that I had to do something with the antenna because if it, I had to be able to get it in the garage. Not my particular idea, but the wife's particular idea, no holes in the car. No holes in the center, nothing running through the side doors or in the dashboard or anything. I have to say, you'll see there that I did violate it real tiny. One time. Well, that was two times. And then, <laughs> just two times, I, I, that's it. I had to think of it, but it was just two times. Uh, no visible wires, that was a, another important consideration. And the presentation, the goal tonight, are just to show you what I did, and to encourage you to, if you have that desire to put the radio in the car, go ahead with it. Um, you can consult with me, you can consult with other people in here that have been successful with their installation. So uh, don't let lack of experience hold you back because when I started it, I didn't have any experience and now I have experience. <laughs> so the, uh, the first thing was no visible wires. And uh, this, of course, this is what the young, this is what the little lady thought it was going to look like when I was finished. And so this was her image in the, in her mind. So I had to kind of destroy that. And those seat covers are pretty cool there. You know? Pardon me? Those seat covers are pretty special. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what we ended up with. What I ended up with in mine was the, uh, the of course, I only have two uh, bands there. The uh, vehicle I worked with, this is just kind of the specs on it, a, a Jeep, and the, the radio was a Kenwood D710. And the important thing here, too, is the green light lab GPS. It is a real tiny little thing. There'll be some pictures in here. It is a wonderful device to put in your car. You don't have to mount it someplace else in the car and run connecting wires. It's all right there. It gets its power right from a single power line. The uh, antenna is the uh, Diamond K9000. The antenna goes up, whoop, antenna goes down, whoop, in the garage, out of the garage, no problem. And then a couple of the other items was an MFJ speaker, and I put in a, a headset with a mic on it so that I can plug it in, and if we're driving down the road, she can drive and I can operate and there's uh, <coughs> without any conflict, usually unless we're trying to decide where to eat or sleep or there's a funny <coughs> noise in the car, whatever. Well, that's the radio. Yes, right, yeah, right. So this is what it looks like in the driver's compartment. Everything there is, uh, is comes with the original car except for the microphone and the speaker. Let's see if this is, oh, let me back up here a little bit. How do I back up? Okay, that isn't going to work. There we go. Uh, I need to show you a little bit right here. This is where the uh, mic plugs in. So the mic plugs right into that tray. The line goes behind the speaker and up into the mic head. These two switches here 
work the antenna. This one, when it's in the back position, the antenna is down. When you flip that in the front position, the antenna is up. And this is the power switch, and it is a locked toggle switch. So if you want to flip it forward, you have to lift it up, move it forward, and then that puts power into the antenna motor. And then when you let go of it, it's momentary. It snaps back down into its locked position. So you can't inadvertently have, it, have the car in the garage and flip the switch up and have the antenna go up with it in the garage. Uh, I was going to try to put some kind of a detector on there to tell me when the, the antenna was up when I drove in the garage or not, but I did, found out that I didn't need this detector. There was an audio detector, and it just makes all kinds of racket when you drive in the garage and the, the antenna's up, so that, that kind of solved that problem. This is looking at the uh, engine compartment on the battery side, and uh, I have this electrical distribution box where all of, most all the fuses are located in the box, and you can see it's right next to the battery, and we have a... Uh, Ground, a, the ground lug right there, a nice big bolt, about 5 8 inch bolt that bolts right into the frame of the car. So it's a good solid ground. And the uh, you can't see the positive terminal, but there is a positive terminal right at the end of this box here. So uh, I didn't have to do any real searching to get power or to get it to ground it out. Uh, this was really important. Uh, and this I bought down at the uh, auto store. It's just uh, you know like an accordion, uh, and it has a split in the side of it, so you can just wrap it around the wires and keeps the wires from getting hot, keeps them from burning. Yes. Was the electrical distribution box something you put in, or was it already? No, that was there. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. This was this was came with the car. And you added that protection yourself. Yes, I put this in because that protected the wires that I added in. So the, the wires, all the wires that were in there, like for instance this right here, was already wrapped up in that stuff. That came with the car. This was some wires that I added to it. So then I just put this, put the protection around the outside of it. No cigarette lighter connections. Cigarette lighter connections, to me it was, you know, wasn't really permanent. It didn't meet kind of the goals that I had set out ahead of time. Uh, if you wanted to do it with a cigarette lighter, Call it a temporary installation, but this was going to be a permanent installation here. Current limitations. Pardon me? Yeah, aren't there some, uh, Mac, some current limitations on cigarette lighters? Uh, possible. They also heat up. Well, but, uh, from, from poor resistance yeah. or contact. But in any case, if you hook it up directly, you don't have that particular problem. I didn't have to drill these holes. There was a whole bunch of holes. This is looking at the front of the radiator. You can see the, uh, I think that's the air conditioner right there. There's the uh, serpentine belt pattern. This runs right along the front of the car. This is the grill work here. There was a whole series of these little holes. They had nothing in them. And they just ran, there was one over here and another one over here and another one over here. <laughs> so when I ran the wire from the electrical distribution box over here, I ran it across the front of the car over to where the driver's side is and all I had to do was to just put this uh, wire tie through the hole around the wire that I brought back up through and the head of the wire tie was so large that it didn't drop down through the hole. Perfect. I mean, I, did, I just lucked into it so I didn't have to sit there and try and drive or uh, drill holes through this steel. and. Uh, I ran into it, so these are just some of the things I'm pointing out that when you do this, maybe you want to look around and just be lucky and find some of these. Uh, I was lucky in this, I have to tell you, I was very fortunate in some other things you'll see too. Here goes the uh, some more of this as it runs, the electrical wire runs across the front and then into the in through the firewall. Now we talked a little bit earlier about the, uh, let's see if I can, there it goes back. We talked about uh, how do you get you know holes in the in the chassis and so on and find holes in the firewall. I don't know why I thought of this, but I was working in the garage, 
And so it was kind of dark, the subdued, and the hood was up so that any residual light was kind of there. And I had the shop light there. And so I just took the shop light and I put it in the driver's side down where the brake pedals were. And my gosh, I got all kinds of holes that just became immediately visible that I couldn't see ahead of time. So I'm standing there with the shop light in the engine compartment, shining them down to the firewall, and I didn't see any of them. I said, let's do it the other way. So I moved the shop light around to the inside, and then I had my head in the dark engine compartment, and I had no problem finding the holes that I needed. So this runs through the, uh, this runs through the firewall and into the, the driver's compartment where you sit there with your feet. And here you see the driver's seat, and this is the front of the car over here. And what you'll see here is there's a piece of the floor channel covering that runs right along underneath the door. So I popped this out and I could see all this wrapped wire that was wire that the, the manufacturer put in. And so I went in through the firewall behind this piece of cardboard that's right up here. And then I found this channel and ran this red and white wire that you see right there in this channel and then it went through the uh, for the column between the two doors and then I popped the same channel off in the back seat and then was able to run it around. Yes, Corky? What kind of car was this? It's a Jeep, a 2004 Jeep. Jeep actually puts these in. So Pardon me? So Jeep actually puts channels in specifically for... Yes, for their wiring. For their wiring. Right. Other cars don't necessarily do that. And I'm just my experience in getting through the firewall, I spent the better part of two days looking for a way to get through the firewall. I finally gave up and actually took it into um, one of the local stereo installation mm -hmm. stores and just said, here's the wire, here's the connections for the battery, <clears throat> told them where I wanted it in the passenger compartment, and they ran it for me for about 15 bucks. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's fifteen. Where was that store? That store's gone out of business. It was over. Oh no wonder. It was it was the electronic store that was over on fifty, right where fifty and twenty nine come together. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. That is certainly a, a good way to do it. I know people who use Best Buy, and I think they they're like thirty five bucks. Uh huh. Even thirty-five dollars, yeah. my gosh, you know that's a good price. Uh, David uh, Shank, who now used to be a member here and has moved up to Pennsylvania, he went to a stereo place and they did the installation for him, and it met his wife's criteria too—that uh, no visible wires and everything popped out right where he wanted yeah, in it. In this case, I just had him put, just come through the firewall. I did mm -hmm. the rest of the installation myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, an excellent solution, you know, 15 bucks, my gosh. Uh, okay, so you can see the Jeep wiring, which is wrapped up in the, in the uh, black wire. And then the, my wiring was the uh, red and white wires. And so they ran uh, along that channel to the, uh, this is the back seat. Now uh, it's a uh, SUV. This is what you sit on behind the driver's. Behind the driver's seat, and then this is the area that's exposed, and then this the seat back here normally flops forward, and you can see where the seat back there has flopped forward over the other half. So it hasn't flopped forward here, it's still in the back position. One of the things I did that was, uh, I don't say brilliant, but it certainly made the installation work well. And that is, I took a piece of six or eighth inch plywood. Well, let's see here. Let's talk about this first. Another one of these lucky things in finding the hole <coughs> on the radiator was there was a structural channel that ran from the left side to the right side <coughs> of the car. So I popped up the, uh, the channel right underneath the door here and ran the wires back. There was a hole right here, came right in through here, and there's another hole right there, and it just went right into the uh, this compartment that I needed. So there was a hole already drilled there and one here. So now I'm putting these in, but I every time I started to put them in, I had to reposition them, and then it was very difficult. I ended up just mounting them 
Let's see if I can show you. On a piece of eighth inch plywood, just a very thin sheet. And so they, this was mounted on there, this was mounted on there. So every time I put it in and took it out, it didn't change. And I only had to move one piece, I didn't have to move several, and everything was in the right place each time I put it in. And when I finally put it in for the last time, it was just the way I, I had it, even from the first time that I tried it. You didn't put a handle in How is the uh, airflow with the seat down? You know, I've never tested it. Uh, I did put some paper in on top of this and then I threw the seat forward to see whether or not I got an imprint on the paper, which it did not come through. Uh, I imagine it probably gets hot, but you know, you're not, you're not sitting there transmitting five minutes, 10 minutes where it's going to get hot. It's most of the time it's just in the receive mode. So it's going to be probably minimal. Uh, I've never had a problem with it and, um, but I've never talked a long time on it either, you know, holding it open and having a, a scientific discussion with it. But I imagine it, you know, it might heat it up. I don't know, are there leather seats? I have no idea. Would that have your passengers compliment you on your seat warmer then? Oh yeah, <laughs> we do have seat warmers in the front and then yeah. now we have one on the left side. So everybody kind of gravitates towards that side in, in the winter time. We've got your plastic in there that'll melt at 180 degrees. Yeah, <laughs> here, comes the, uh, here comes the power in. And uh, I put in a rig runner, very nice thing to do because then you can just tap into anything else anytime you need some voltage in the back seat, tap right into the rig runner. And the only thing I really had to do was to put it into the, uh, the antenna, but it makes a very nice connection. And there goes the power in there and the power to the antenna motor. You tap the antenna motor into your The, the went into the switch up in the in the driver's compartment so that was the uh, the other the, the reason that this channel was so important was the power came in this way and then the line that went up to the microphone and to this to the antenna both the up and down part of the antenna and the power of the antenna went through this channel over to the passenger side then it went up the channel in the passenger side, behind the glove compartment. This is where I, my neighbor came over and I was gonna run it up uh, right through the center, through this uh, transmission hump right here, in through the console and then come up that way. And it was, was kind of hokey, but it would have worked. But he, he encouraged me and so I tore up everything on the passenger side and then went up behind the glove compartment and then fed it down behind the radio and then came in and then ran the microphone, the up and down switch for the antenna and the uh, power for the antenna on the other side because there wasn't enough room to jam all of those in the side, in the driver's side. It was getting pretty tight in there with what the uh, Jeep had left for me when they finished building the car. And that's the uh, control head wires, and that's the, what I said ran up the other side. Antenna coax, uh, pretty simple. Now, once again, we had this domestic discussion, different perceptions, different ideas on what an antenna is going to look like on top of the car. This is the little lady's idea of what the car was going to look like. And I had to try to convince her that it was going to be something less intrusive than that. Did you enjoy that one, though? <laughs> so uh, we, got, we got over this part of the building and ended up with the, uh, the diamond antenna. This works extremely well. And you can see here where uh, it, the line comes up. This is part of the... Uh, rain gutter, I think that was in there already. I just tied this little wire tie. This stuff shrinks. This is the uh, door seal. I didn't mess around with it. It just shrunk by itself. And uh, so I went to price out new door seal and it's about $250 to do all four doors. And they are, they kind of need it. But uh, so far I've spent the $250 on the antenna and radio gear. Something I get pleasure out of instead of that's the door seal there. So it runs up 
comes up where this the uh, the door latches right down about here someplace, and then it just runs up behind the uh, rubber that's on the inside of the car, and then it goes. It's protected from this door seal that's pulled away just a little bit to see, and then it runs up into the antenna. Is that RG six thirteen? Uh, it's real tiny. I, 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 it's whatever came with it. I don't remember what it is, but it's, it's, it, it, 174 sounds more like it. I use the same, same stuff. It is, it is pretty small. So this is what looks like, what it looks like in the uh, driver's compartment. And, uh, so you can see the connection now that goes back to the, uh, transceiver. And this is just, this is the plastic dashboard, and then this is a piece of soft dashboard. It's not, not real soft, but it's, it's flexible. And I just poked this down in there and ran it right along there, and then it comes down this channel where the hinges are over here, and then it goes into the, uh, into the floor channel. So uh, this is about the only piece of wire that you can really see, and of course it just immediately disappears. Now here's the little uh, green light lab. This is the GPS unit. And you can see that it's about, oh, what is that, about an inch and a half, maybe two inches, two inch cube. And it has a, a Velcro stickum that it comes with the, uh, the unit itself. It sticks right to the back of the, the control head. This connector right here comes with it. And this connector right here comes with it. So. The only thing that you do is you take the line that comes from the transceiver in the back seat and it comes up and it plugs into the back side of this GPS unit. So it comes in the other side. This is what comes out of the side that we can see. And those two units plug right into each other. They get their power, they get their electronic connections, everything. I guess I can hit this button here. That's the mounting bracket. It looks kind of like a piece of weird something that, there. But uh, well worth the price. I, matter of fact, I even had to wait, I don't know, maybe six weeks for it. But it was worth it. Uh, because I've seen some of the units where they have a hockey puck that you sit on the back seat someplace or maybe on the package tray and you run these wires. Boy, that is one compact, sweet deal. What do you use that for? I'm not sure what we use. That's the uh, GPS for the, I mean, for the APRS connections. And it's, uh, it is made for that particular control head, that particular radio. Mm -hmm. And you, so you don't have to do any programming. You don't have to do anything except just plug it in. There's just three plugs and it's, and then it sits there and it's working. I don't have APRS for it. It's, it is a sweet deal. Uh, if you're ever going to do it, I would, and, and you like the Kenwood, like that at the same so time. So does your radio have to have an APRS function built in? It has, to, in? Yeah. it has to get the signal so that it can show where you are on the map when you do, uh, you know, when you, when you pull up the, the map on your computer screen to see the route that you've taken or see where various cars are. But my, my, uh, my, my radio is not advertised with APRS. So yeah, the the Kenwood does. This one happens to have APRS. Yeah. yeah, it. Mine's not APRS ready, so I can't. All your all your radios are CNC. You can use either software CNC, a free one like ABW TV, but then you have to have a computer with it, um, or a hardware like ABC Twenty will back couple your your radio with the two exactly the same thing. Okay. APRS is nice. Okay, well that looks interesting. It looks like we've seen that before. Okay, so now, oh yes, this is where I fess up. These are the two holes that I drilled in the car, right there. That one and that one. And other than that, oh, another thing that really worked out nice, nicely, is this is a tray that is replaceable. So the, all the holes that I drilled in there, I just pull. If I'm ever going to take it out. I can just take it out and put a brand new tray in, and I have no holes in it. How so, much is that tray from the dealership? 
I don't know. I haven't got that point yet. But no matter what it is, domestic tranquility would far exceed any cost. Yeah. Well, I just bought some little silver dollar size hubcaps for my Jeep. $35 for one of those guys. And I had to buy four of them because when they balanced the tires, they had to knock them out and they broke when they came out. Okay, well, let's see what we got here. Oh, the antenna up and down switch. We pretty much talked about that. Uh, the up and down. How did I? Oh, oh, on the, uh, it just has a, a double-sided tape and the bracket was on the, on that last picture we had where I yeah, so poked it right down, okay. I wiggled it around, man, it is stuck, it is stuck on there. I don't know what's yeah, going to happen when I, I take it off. Same thing, but I also put one screw in there. Oh, see, that, that you'd have had three holes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's the speaker. Oh, yeah, if I was ever to do any, to do this again, I put a, a jack on the side of the, uh, MFJ speaker so that I could plug the uh, headset into there. If I were to do it again, I would put a second jack on it. One which would mute the speaker or one which, or I could plug it in the other one, which would let the speaker play. So if the driver wants to listen to this conversation that's going on, I'd plug it into one. If the driver didn't want to listen to it, I'd plug it in the other one and it would then mute the speaker. That would be the only thing that uh, that I would have changed on that. But it wouldn't mute you, you. I know, it wouldn't mute me. <laughs> <laughs> you put a switch well, on the, in the speaker head, on the top of the speaker. Yeah, but that sure, there's a lot of ways of doing it, but that would be, that would be the way I do it, so you just plug it into one or plug it in the other. And then you can change it back and forth. Operation. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Questions? We have two minutes for questions.